Ergo. Henceforth. In conclusion. Yes. Dude, I did legs again today, as I told you. Yep. <sighs> good. Legs are good for you. I, I'm starting to like it, and I hate that. I feel like in just general athletics, legs are better anyways. It's true. It is true. Yeah. Dude, plus you can get that, that booty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. An absolute dump truck. Never been a gold mine. God gifted me with a Dude, booty. Why so. can't I pull down my pants? That's a good question. Oh, my beanie was in the way. That's weird. How does a beanie get in the way of one's pants? You know, I couldn't tell you, Bob. But it happened. It does happen. Well. I smell like shower. That's not, that's not a bad thing. No, it's kind of nice. Mm. You know, I like, dude. Mm. Okay, so one of the, my favorite things after a workout, you ever just like laid on a rug after working out? Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. Like, why is that so much just better? Just lay on your floor. Yeah. yeah. Before you shower. Oh, yeah. You just, like, you just fall down. You just, uh, you're just exhausted. Yeah. It's nice. I've been late a couple times because of that. I believe it. Do you work out every morning? Yeah. No, after I go for a walk, sometimes my, my back, because, you know, I'm carrying the backpack. Yeah, true. And sometimes I just feel like I need to lay down straight in that bad boy out. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, dude, I did. I did back. Was that yesterday? It was yesterday. I did deadlifts. <sighs> I felt good. I felt good. My lower back hurts. I did like a hundred calf raises while I was reading this morning. Oh my god. I don't know why. I was just like, I might as well get something else done. I did forty-five, but I had um, forty-pound dumbbells in each hand while doing nice. calf raises. Uh, you can surprise. You can do a surprising amount of weight. With calf raise. Have you ever noticed that? That's because, that's because like your calves are just huge. My calves are really, they're not huge. My calves are. That's like, since I played drums and like I use the bass pedal. Right. Like, nice. it's like the only thing I got going for me. I think there's just like such good leverage. With that our too. Feet, with our feet. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I did not mean to get that dirty. That's fine, I'm actually gonna clean the inside of my car pretty soon. Huh, well, I just gave you more of a purpose, I guess? I don't, I don't know. More to do? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I don't, I apologize for like getting it dirty, That's but also fine. like, it's just a little wet. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I had something I was going to say. What was it? What was it? What was it? What was it? It'll come to me at some point. Um, well, I don't remember. I've been thinking, uh, a lot in my counseling class. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost feel like I'm getting counseling from my counseling class. I don't know if that's healthy or unhealthy, but continue. Cause he's just like talking through the different theories of therapy and he'll mm-hmm. be like projection That's oh yeah and you um externalize something you actually hate about yourself on mm-hmm. someone else yep and he was like yeah so like what you hate about other people sorry to tell you it's really what you hate about yourself and i was like that's not true and i started thinking about it and i was like wow that's true yep and then it's it's one of the one of the biggest things that people deal with project yeah i had no i like i didn't know that i've been thinking mm-hmm. about it and i'm just like seeing it everywhere now Mm-hmm. And that really got me thinking about how we teach forgiveness and love in church. Mm-hmm. And there's always that question like, but how How do I forgive them? Mm-hmm. How do I love them? And I'm just thinking like, like uh, I've noticed that in, my, that in myself, what, whatever I judge myself by, is exactly the standards by which I judge other people. So the people that I look down on, that I don't love, Mm -hmm. they have the qualities that I hate most about myself. Wow. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And the people that I value, it's not necessarily the people that I actually have genuine love for. It's just that the things that I'm most proud of in myself, I think that they're valuable just because they have these things that I think are valuable. It's like workspace. Mm-hmm. Right? And what quality do I have then? I'm kidding. You don't have to answer that. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Stop. So the Stop. Quality I know you're I hate thinking about, about you. <laughs> <laughs> what I hate about you. <laughs> you're a freaking douche. <laughs> yeah. So, so like I've noticed that 
Mm -hmm. I want to learn to actually love someone and forgive someone. It's like that stupid saying. Love yourself. Gotta learn to love yourself. It's true, and I hate it. But it is true. I always Mm -hmm. thought it was just some selfish bullcrap that people said so they could focus on themselves. You know what? It is true. Mm -hmm. It's true, because if I'm thinking, like, if I'm insecure about my body, let's just Mm -hmm. go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a common one for young people. If I'm insecure about my body, then subconsciously the people that i think are attractive people i think that they're more valuable and more worth my love Mm -hmm. i just am like more gravitated towards them the people that i think are not attractive i look down on them Mm -hmm. so my issue with myself yep is making me less of a loving person Mm -hmm. and i've really had to like i won't say any names but i've like noticed like there's this one person i realized i don't like this person because they have any good qualities not that they don't have good qualities it's just that that's not because of those qualities and i don't really have compassion for this person i just think they have a couple striking bad ones no 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 no. they have a couple attributes that are points of 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 pride for Mm -hmm. myself so because i think that this person is valuable because of their worth oh oh okay okay then i think i'm more valuable if they like me so it's, a oh. self, so it's a self-serving relationship. Oh, I, don't, okay, okay. I don't actually have any compassion for this person. I just think that for, based on their works, mm-hmm. that they're valuable, and therefore I want them to love me so that I am elevated. Mm, okay, okay, I see that. Now. I see it, I see it. See, I am the opposite. I see someone who shares, who has things that I strongly dislike about myself. Mm. And there's an individual where... They, to put it gently, they take pride Mm -hmm. in attribute X that I hate about myself. Mm -hmm. So when I see someone not only having that quality, but taking pride in it, I strongly get heated and disgusted at said person. Yeah. And for no, for no good reason. Sometimes it is a good reason because well, the if person it's like an actually negative quality. Then it's, it is. Then it's for a good reason. It's but... an actual negative quality, and sometimes yeah. they're they're genuinely a, a not nice person. Okay. Yeah. The, I think sometimes it's justified, but I know there are sometimes where the person has done nothing wrong, and I wake up and I see them across the hall, and I just want to punch him in the face. <laughs> then it's bad. <laughs> then it's bad. I think where it becomes like this unnecessary view is when you hate them for their negative qualities Mm -hmm. but then there's other people who you can clearly see have negative qualities but you're just like you know everyone's different yeah exactly And it doesn't bother you it's not it can Mm -hmm. almost be endearing sometimes yeah like some of my closest friends i'm like you know what sometimes they're a jerk but that's okay because they're my jerk i love them yeah you like forgive it because it's not something you deal with yeah exactly (laughs) but if you're like man that guy's so so freaking full of himself it's because you base your worth on mm-hmm. your accomplishments. So when you see someone else that has better accomplishments, you're intimidated by them. Mm-hmm. 100%. You think they're more valuable than you because yep. you've based your whole schema of value yep. on works. Yep. And that's when it gets really insidious is when you can't hang out with people that have gifts. You have to only surround yourself with people that you feel superior to. Oof, yikes. That's a... Oof. I've done that. I've noticed that I've done that. And I, I need to not do Wait, that. Wait, then why do you hang out with me? No, I'm just kidding. It's not that I don't hang out with people, but it's that I think have, like, valuable gifts. But when it's the same gift as me, I get intimidated. And I feel like I need to... Mm-hmm. I need to usurp them. That's fair. You have definitely usurped me in a lot of ways. Well, but that's I feel okay. like we're so different that I haven't had this issue. Like, I don't... I don't really look... I don't look down on you because you're so different than me that I feel like you just... We, we, I think we have different struggles. So, like, the negative qualities in me, I just don't even see them in you at all. We just coexist so well. We're just, like, parallel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'll we don't like run that. into each other much. That's fair. The only time we run into each other where we're just like, man, working out, am I right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. We and have that's like, it. Yeah, we have, like, common interests and stuff. But yeah, as far yeah. as, like, what my... It sounds so pretentious. My value schema of people wow look at these big words today like how i judge myself that doesn't cause me to run into a lot of like Mm -hmm. either feeling superior or feeling um uh, intimidated by 
Yeah, that makes sense. I both are deeply unhealthy. True, true. I um having um some psychology majors as some of my best friends, I get like psychology lectures light. Yeah. And <laughs> like some of the stuff they say I'm like, dang. Dang. I would appreciate if you never said that ever again. <laughs> Don't ever point out that flaw in me. Again. Um yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> uh, and just also as with growing older, there's so many other things where I just become aware of. Like, I think that's just... Oh, okay. Hold down our windows a little bit just to cut down on some of the... That's fair. Um, Steam. Steam? Fog. A little bit of both. Yeah, whatever. It's just like, what's the difference between a sauna and a steam room? Because apparently there is one. There is a difference. I don't I don't know what it is, I do you? it's just a difference of degrees. I don't... Well, ah, huh, funny. I mean, ah. the degree of uh, moisture. Oh, moisture. I think yeah. that's all it is. See, probably, but I don't know. And they were arguing so adamantly and i'm like if you can't prove it there's not one if you can't prove it I, that's not necessarily true because there's a difference between there's a difference between the mars and the earth but they're both round planets is with there rocks. a god because if you can't prove it there's not one. <laughs> oh yikes oh yikes <laughs> uh, um i'm 90 sure we've talked about this on the podcast but yeah. do you think you can prove god no i don't think we can either no I, think I don't, don't want to get away faith. from this really profound discussion we're having I, about. As you can people. see, I'm trying to. That's called def- the. Uh, That's called escaping. Uh, deflecting, resistance, something like that. It's deflecting and escaping. Yeah. A combination of those two. No, 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 something that I've become very, very well versed in. Let's lean into this. Let's not. Let's not get away from this. Um, what is your main? Going back to this, what is your main habit of escape? Mm, that's a good question. Oh, what was that? That right there. No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> um, a good question. I don't know if I'm much of an escapist. I am hardcore. Let me tell you, video games and drinking work wonders. Mm, yeah, you told me that like last summer. Yes. Drinking yes. became an issue. It was. Yeah, I talked about that in our uh, hermeneutic. Not herme- No, not hermeneutic. Uh, homiletics. Talked about it in our homiletics class. Gave yeah. a sermon on it. Good class. It was a good, a decent class. Yeah. <sighs> I'm starting to like Rob's pragmatism less and less. Yeah? Yeah. I just feel like there's a feel lot like of... you need more meat? I No, I just feel like there's some things where in the church we have to take a lot heavier stance on. And I feel sure. like with sure. Rob's pragmatism, he doesn't take as heavy of a stance as I appreciate. Yeah, if Rob was my only teacher, I would feel I was missing something. Yes. Do you, yes. Um, but with Ray Lubeck, where I just get a fire hose of terms and bible studies and uh oof. you know i want to come back to this that we're talking about but i also just want to say i feel like there's some teachers on campus that have a cult following yes ray like, is one of them like they haven't i think that they have achieved this not through being a great teacher but through their personality that's a it's a hot take it's a real hot take, isn't it? I don't know about... Because I know who you're talking about. Do you? I think I like three people. Three teachers. Well, okay, I'm just going to guess. Um, I mean, I can say them. I don't have any yeah. issue. Rob, Ray, and... Um, Jossberger, Kutz. One of those No, two. no, actually, I was thinking... Um, Jay Held. Mm, okay. Dr. Pothin. And Ray Lubeck were the three that I was thinking mm, are, okay. have the most charismatic following. Um, I would argue Rob over Dr. Pothin because Dr. Pothin's following... You know, Rob definitely does have a loyal following of students. Um, I would argue Rob over Pothin because Pothin, Pothin's is whoever is in her class. It's not people throughout the years. It's whoever's, it's whoever's in her class that That's year. That's a good point. Um, and then the second people are out of the class, they kind of fall off. Because I was the same yeah. way. Freshman and sophomore year, I was like, oh my gosh, Dr. Pothin's one of my favorites. She's so smart. She's, she is a, she she is is. a genius. She is smart. She I, is a I genius. I wouldn't say she's not. Yeah, I would say I don't, I don't, I don't know, the sassiness, whatever. Um, she's a genius and she does cause students to revolutionize their thinking methods and how they view different aspects of the world. But also I think that is a common factor uh, at this stage of life. Um, yeah. And people sort of project the greatness of it onto Dr. Pothin. 
Yeah, I noticed in Jay's class, and I, for, at first, I don't want to say that I'm, like, speaking ill of these teachers. I don't look down on them. Oh, no, no, these teachers um, are phenomenal. It's more of a, it's a critique, definitely, but I don't want to say that, like, I think these people are actually terrible teachers. So I, I have respect for them, certainly. But um, Jay Held, especially, I just felt like he had such an authority in the classroom mm-hmm. that students substituted his opinion for their own. Hmm. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Especially when we were talking about what is the church. Ah, <laughs> true. I felt that every student in that class was trying to figure out what Jay believed the church was mm-hmm. and not what they believed the church was. I felt like they had such confidence that Jay was right and that they were just waiting for him to finally tell them as if they couldn't figure it out. out. Hmm, Interesting. I I think that's really unhealthy. I think it can be. Because I don't want to become a mini Jay Held. I don't think that was Jay Held's goal either. I think he really wanted to challenge you for you to think. Yeah, I don't think it was his goal, but I think it was an unintended effect, at least on Mm -hmm. uh, freshmen. Because I know he taught differently once he got further into his program. Yeah, I think think the main factor of that is is that these professors are geniuses and they're so much higher than what we expect and they're so Mm -hmm. much more genuine... Uh, intellectual, whatever adjective you want to throw in there. They're just so much more than what we expect that we start to crave their opinion and their knowledge. And since we want it so much, we start to input that in our own instead of having our own opinion or our own knowledge. Instead of thinking for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because you think, oh, this person is so smart, they have to be right. Right. It's sort of like making your parents' faith your own. Um, Right. It's like when, like, when you're a kid, like, Oh, mom and dad believe that this Jesus guy exists. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to love him. I'm going to pray for my sin to go away or whatever prayer you pray. Um, it's kind of it's kind of similar to that. And it's not that it's necessarily wrong. In fact, we're called to have a childlike faith. But there is a time eventually where, as Paul says, we need to have the meat. We need to have the, the hefty thinking. We need to have the theology. We need to have our own stance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think mm-hmm. the same applies to school knowledge. Like when Absolutely. we like when we grow up in a college, we're, when we come to a college freshman to senior year, we have professors that stick with us. We have professors that we respect, and there are somewhere that we're just like, man, they're so smart and they're so wise. What they say has to be right because they're so smart and they're so wise. Yeah, I think you're getting at something really interesting there. I think that uh, what we believe isn't based anymore on good reasoning or our faith. It's based on our faith in the teacher. Mm, Yeah. So it gets to a point where they could just say any sort of nonsense. And you would have such faith in them that you'd be like, I don't get it. But he's so smart that I think it's probably right. I think within certain boundaries, yes. Obviously within certain boundaries. Yeah, it's not to the Uh, level of an actual cult leader. Yeah. Yikes. (laughs) Um, I just remember... uh, this one, I'm not going to say who it was. Uh, a professor was talking about the Ravi Zacharias. Um, and they didn't come down nearly as hard as they should have about uh, how it was sexual assault, about how it was rape, about how Ravi Zacharias committed such terrible, terrible things. Um, and he was taking it... They... Mm, yikes. Um, <laughs> he was taking it a lot lighter and a lot more questionable and a lot more not attacking stance. Yeah, he's more forgiving of it. Yes, and we're all... Well, I mean, we should be forgiving. He was excusing it. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was excusing it. Um, and there were me and a couple other students who were sitting there, and we were just kind of flabbergasted, like, Flabbergast. is this professor really saying this? Yeah. Is he really, is he really doing this? Is he trying to excuse this and then literally within two sentences later um they didn't see anything here's hoping they just walked right by here's hoping um within two sentences later um the same professor was talking about how anyone who has um an inkling of a sexual assault charge should come forward and say it instantaneously just in case um interesting and 
like we like looked at the two things and we're like, okay, when it comes to Ravi Zacharias, these people are coming forward and they're saying it and you're trying to excuse it. And then you come forward and you say, if anyone has an inkling about sexual, like of sexual assault being done to them, they should come forward and say it. Hmm. What is your viewpoint of this? Mm-hmm. Um, and then he was talking about how, um, I think it was, I think it was Kobe Bryant. Um, he had sexual assault charges made against him. Um, and no one gave a crap about it because, oh, it's Kobe Bryant. Oh, uh, he's famous. Oh, he's a great guy. Oh, he's wonderful. And he started talking about that. And I was sitting there, I was like, do you not see the irony about how you're trying to excuse this for Ravi Zacharias? Mm. And yet you're condemning people for doing the same thing for Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Daddy. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like, it's stuff like that. Just stay like when they start to. not make sense (laughs) I don't really have a better way to put it when they start to not make sense it's just kind of like you know you are human yeah and I don't know if I agree with you anymore and it really causes you to think for yourself and I think that's super healthy yeah once you like lose track of the fact that they make mistakes every single day Mm -hmm. then like you start becoming on board with all sorts of with their mistakes like their mistakes are yeah. are suddenly okay because they're so perfect yes. and that excuses you making those same mistakes mm-hmm. whether it be in thinking errors or it be like actual sin yeah and then you just go off the rails mhm again i don't think it's like that um it's that simply bad. not extreme no but i'm just saying i th- I, I sense the danger yeah exactly and I agree with you on that one. I really didn't want to be in any of those teachers' classes because I just felt like that's what the environment was. After mm-hmm. getting a little taste of them, the way I heard students talk about them, I was like, I kind of want to just disagree with the teacher. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to agree with them to the extent that I feel like they were demanding of their students or that the students thought was right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I remember uh, in a certain class, first day. Um, the prof was like, well, why did you guys take this class? Um, and the class was about, was about reading the Bible and like how to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going around and it comes to me and I'm like, I want to learn how to read the Bible so I can not spit out heresy. So I think that would be kind of cool. And he was like, that's a good answer. I respect that. And I would say about half the class said, when I saw that you were teaching this class, doctor professor person i knew that i had to sign up for this class i knew that it was going to be a great class and that i had to learn it doctor professor person i don't i don't want to say who it is i'm wondering that you could guess um yeah i've I've heard that happen um and i was just sitting there and i was like the amount of just sucking up that is happening right now yeah i don't want to be a part of this yes the the professor is like a certified genius and he's got the card and everything you could ask him exactly um he has the doctor professor genius card he's got it government issue Uh uh-huh but i'm just sitting there like what yeah just because x professor is teaching it doesn't make it instantaneously better than other professor x sure Uh and i think there's also a healthy aspect like we should all seek out mentors yeah, and we should it should be people that who, whose opinions we've we've heard and, and thought that's that's a good opinion or whose characters we've we we respect probably character more more importantly but it kind of depends on what you're looking for in the mentorship. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and the, to a certain degree, we should give them the benefit of the doubt as someone who's more experienced and perhaps more skilled in whatever area. But it can get to a point where you're just like so trusting that you lose track of the fact that you might actually be smarter than them in, yeah. in five years, 10 years, whatever you might, it's a hundred percent possible that mm-hmm. you will be at their level. You can't look up to them like they're a God. Yep. I agree. It's what I hate about when we look back at church leaders, mm-hmm. like C.S. Lewis, great guy, super smart sounding, but I feel like there's so many church leaders that, we just respect just because they're in the textbook. That makes sense. I've just been like, you guys realize that these, it was just some guy. Yeah. C.S. Lewis probably went to a coffee shop, got a, he seems like a type of guy that would get a tea, actually. Probably went to a tea shop, wrote Chronicles of Narnia, went about his day just like any other author. Yeah. 
and he's smart and he's articulate. Mm -hmm. But he's not an unobtainable level of smart and articulate. No, not even close. Um. Oh man, my most frustrating example of this is uh, Anselm's ontological argument. I've, okay, no I've learned about this in four different classes. It's an apologetics argument that basically God is the greatest conceivable being, right? Okay. And uh, that makes sense. things that exist are better than things that don't exist, right? Like an actual ice cream cone is better than the idea of an ice cream oh, cone. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. So, if in my head I'm thinking about the greatest conceivable being, the greatest possible being, mm -hmm. then if that being existed that would be better. For So for it to be truly the greatest conceivable being, God must exist. I, it makes no sense. That doesn't work. But I've learned about it in four classes, and all the professors are like, look, it's confusing, but church fathers have been looking at this for centuries. you got to give it a chance. And I'm like, why? That, it's stupid. That doesn't make sense. He's lost in the sauce. Yeah. He confused himself into an argument, and everyone got, was just like, Sure, because they thought he was a smart guy. He okay, wrote so, other smart okay stuff. so imagine that there is a God. Yeah. And the greatest possible God that you can imagine. Yeah. If there is a God that exists, very clearly he's going to be better than yes. the God that you have thought of. Than the imaginary God. <clears throat> that. Why does that make it. That doesn't true? work. It doesn't. Because that just assumes that God exists. That doesn't prove anything. It's the dumbest argument I've heard. I would agree with for that. For apologetics. I would agree with that. Anyone listening who thinks that Anselm had a great idea there, you're deluded. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. If you made that argument in a, in a philosophy class, the teacher would be like, what are you talking about? I feel like, I feel like Dr. Gurney would have torn you a new one. I feel like this comes back to English stuff. When you read... A, um, a a a sentence from a super famous author that doesn't use proper grammar. The teacher's like, "Oh, look look at how cool the he didn't <laughs> use it right." But then you do that in an essay, and they're like, "Minus five points." Sounds good, but not accurate. Yeah, you yeah, know, they I just agree. trust the author. They're always right because they're mm -hmm. the magical, special, smart person. Yep. Yep. Um, C.S. Lewis actually talked about that, um, or was it Tolkien? No, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis talked about how. English critics and writing critics always tried to find the point of his works, always tried to find the mm. point of his, all of his works. Um, mm -hmm. And I think he said 99% of the time they were wrong and I had to correct them. Mm -hmm. um, typically he came down and was like, no, that's not even close to what I meant. I did this because I wanted to do this. Yeah. And the only reason we are able to say such things about the Bible is because the authors are dead. Mm. And that got me thinking, like, huh? Ooh, overanalyzing the Bible. Yeah. 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 That got me when to think. Teachers are like, look at the number of vowels. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna tell me that David's poetry was written like <laughs> this because he was depressed? Absolutely not. It was written like this because he wanted to write it like this, and it sounded good. I think sometimes teachers neglect the fact that sometimes things are just written because they sound good, not because they have a super deep emotional meaning. Like, there was a song called Riptide. I tried to figure out the meaning of the song Riptide, you know. Do you know what it's about? Do you know what it's about? I'm a, well, tell me what you think it's about. I think it's about suicide. I thought it was about that kind of stuff, too, but then I listened to an interview. Mm -hmm. You know what the author said? What? I just thought the words sounded good, so I just said them. They don't actually mean anything. Really? Yeah. Oh. That he was like, like, because there's a lot of gibberish in that song. Like, um, um, I want to be your left hand man. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, all my friends are turning green. Yeah. That's and you're true. like, oh, it's like a metaphor of his friends are, you know, turning to money and, and, uh, oh, you know, the left that. hand man. It's like not, you know, he's not like the best, but he wants to be like the second best. But no, it's I just, never thought about he that just thought it sounded nice. I just figured it was taking me down to the riptide because riptides are notorious for. Killing. Sucking people underwater and murdering them, and yeah. so I was like, "Oh, this dude wants to die! Yikes!" Take me down to the riptide. I wanna be your left hand. It's a good song. Something though. like that. I it like is a good song. song. I feel like, uh, yeah. Oh man, that's dangerous if we're applying that kind of logic. Where we're like, "Oh, what does it mean?" But maybe the meaning is more surface level than we think it is. I think there are times where it is, and then there are times where it isn't. That yeah. sounds contradictory, but, like, also, we do no, have to... No, no, yeah, I think you're right. Like, there's times 
when there's clear signs to deeper meaning, but there's times when it's just like, no way, dude. Because like I think, because we have to remind that we have to remember that the text and the scripture itself is inspired by God. Yeah. The authors themselves. This is this was weird. We learned about this in hermeneutic class. The professor said that um, the authors were not inspired, but the text and the scripture itself was. So they wrote what they wrote because God inspired the text to be so. Yeah. Um, so I think there are a lot of times where digging into the text is like much harder than we think. But then I also think there are times, you know, I'll just use this example. I think in, I think it is in second Timothy where Paul talks about women shutting up. Yeah. I think that is a letter to the church talking to those specific women of the church to shut up because yeah, I think that's very possible because like nowhere else in the Bible does it ever talk about women not being able to talk in church or not being able to, um, Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure, um, earlier in the passage, he kind of talks about, I shouldn't say that without looking. I'm going to look real quick. That's fair. Yeah. Keep saying what you're saying. Um, I think that like, um, because if, um, I think it was, I think it was Walt Kaiser. He was talking about, uh, women in the church and women and authority and all that jazz. And he was talking and he said, yes, Eve was created second, but when God commanded Adam and Eve, they were side by side each other and God commanded them both equally to do such things. Be fruitful and multiply or yeah. what was it? Um, it was Adam will work the earth hmm. and Eve will, what was it? Eve will, did she, did he say serve? I don't know. I can't remember. I can't, it was in Genesis. And it was when they were exiting the garden, but he commanded both of them with the same amount of authority and respect for each other and for God. Um, very clearly, there wasn't this, like, I'm not going to say, like, power differentiation because that just, I don't know, big words that I don't think need to be used. Um, but I think that there's a lot of equality there and a lot of stuff that we have messed up. Yeah, and I'm definitely not um, um, completely egalitarian. I think I do think gender roles. There's evidence for gender roles in the Bible, but I don't think that I they're um, as as much of a rule as some people think they are. Because I don't think there's actually any rules in the New Testament at all, really. There's two actually. What are you thinking? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, okay. soul, mind, and yeah. strength, and right. love your neighbor as yourself. That's what I thought you were going those, for. Those are the two rules. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, because like, that is just as a heads up, that is the new covenant. That is the essence of the law. Yes, of the of, of the of the Old Testament law, anyway. Yes, exactly. But like, we're actually not under a law anymore. No, we're not. So it's all about moral issues now. Mm. Um, I mean, not that it wasn't before, but now we're not like actually we're not the nation of Israel. We don't have a legal code that we need to follow. Mm, that in brings the same up way. objective truth for us, though. Yeah. So like, when people say that, like, um, church like government has to be set up exactly this way i'm like well you know i don't think it has to be exactly that way because it's not actually any rules there's just guidelines so so i kind of approach women in leadership in the same way like we should definitely take into account the fact that i think the bible teaches gender roles we should take that into account when Mm -hmm. we're doing church leadership but i don't think that necessarily means that we need strict rules that women can only be in xyz positions yeah um I'm not sure though. But do you think okay thinking. for the gender roles? Do you think that applies to all areas of life or only specific ones? I mean, I think gender roles do apply to like who we are as people. So I guess they could express themselves in mm-hmm. all areas okay. of life. But I don't think that like that means that women should be submissive in all areas of their life. Agreed. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm not. Please no. I'm not just trying to be like, are you sexist? I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to so be that person. So what I'm getting at here is, are you? Uh, chauvinistic pig. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I'm not trying to get at that. Um, I just want to see what page you're on. That's really all I was trying to get. Yeah. Um, I think that there are gender roles very clearly laid out within marriage. Um, yeah. And I think I think a lot, like pretty much everything else outside of that, is a very gray area, and it, I don't know if it actually matters. Sure. Because God, yeah. God very clearly lays out roles for the husband and roles for the wife in marriage very clearly yeah um so 
that's really all I got for gender roles. I think there's only like really one good example of a woman in leadership in the Bible, and that's I think the the um, judge Deborah, like actual leadership authority over people role. Why not Esther? Um, cause she wasn't like really in a position of authority. Dog, she was the queen. Yeah, but I guess so. But like, she had to ask the Pharaoh for permission for everything. And yeah, it was but like him that did it. Yeah, but like she brought it up and she walked into the courtroom unannounced and like she did a lot of ballsy stuff but what i'm saying is she she led but she didn't have the authority mm. is what i'm saying okay i think there's a difference okay. there i see i see what you're like, saying obviously women can lead people because that's just influence mm-hmm. but having the actual authority that i think that was pharaoh but i do think that well, wait, people well, who she... deny that deborah had actual authority because some people just say well it's like the, the men were the ones that actually did everything but i think she had actual authority like she was a prophet well, wait, you just countered your argument for Esther. Why? Because you were like, oh, the men are the ones who actually did everything, just like how Pharaoh is the one who actually did everything. Right. Yeah. And you said that she still had the authority I because can, she was I a prophet. Clarify. So when Esther, she had to go to Pharaoh and say, can we do this pretty please? And Pharaoh said yes. And um, in Deborah, the Lord gave her a word, and then she went to the general, I think it was Barak or whatever, and she was like, this is what needs to happen. And then, so she was the one telling Barak, not saying, hey, Barak, pretty please, could you please send the troops? She was saying, yo, dog, send those boys. <laughs> okay, okay. And then Barak was like, I don't really want to. Well, he did anyways. You know, so I think that shows that she had, she had authority. I guess I see that, yeah. But I mean... I don't know. I just don't think I can draw like a rule from that because I think the Bible setting precedent for something mm-hmm. is different than it setting a rule for something. Yeah. So you could use that to justify that most of our leadership is men. I don't necessarily think you can use that to say that we will only ever have male leaders. Yeah. Moment of silence. I'm just contemplating. You know how aware. I have become of crows because of you. Dude, I'm so aware of crows. I'm still trying to be their friends, but it's hard. I don't have anything to feed them. I need to get a couple bags of nuts for It takes so much time because I gotta like stop what I'm doing and pull out the nuts and crush them and do my little. Kaka! Skrika! Skrika! Trying to get them. That guy is cool because he has his bass loud. That is what do make them cool. It's true. It's true. Do be like that though. Do be like that sometimes. But, uh, you know, I really want to go back to this whole projection thing. <laughs> <laughs> the casual 20 minutes later. Let's uh, go back to projection. Yeah, okay, I'm done. This morning, I was thinking about someone, and I was like, why do I like this person? I feel like I'd hang out. I feel why like I need I to. want them to like me? So how does that make you feel? That's a great idea. Dude, just assume the counseling position. Dang it. Why isn't it? You know what? I'm just going to have to sit up. My chair won't go back. Um, I was thinking about this person. I was like, why do I want them to like me so much? Because I'm a cool guy. What and, can and I you say? You know what? It was because I thought they were an attractive person. Like, I didn't have a crush on them, but they are physically attractive, so I thought that that makes them a valuable person. Was right? it Andrew Dietrich? No, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who it is. Was it Ethan? I'm not going to tell you who it is. So even if you guess them right, I'm just going to keep Was repeating. it Gabriel Wallace? I'm not going to tell you who... Yeah, it was Gabriel. <laughs> no. Dude, Gabe's a stud. I'll die on that hill. No, it was not Gabriel Wallace. But it just the... that I was like, was wow, Paul? so... No, so... Was it Anthony? <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying no. <laughs> I feel like I've already guessed it. So It was Ethan. No, so... I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> So that spoke, was it Jackson? So that, no. <laughs> so that told me, wow, why am I still valuing people's appearance? Was why, it David Fetters? No. Why am I valuing my own appearance so much that I think that just because the fact that people look good, that means that their affection is more valuable for me to achieve? Was it Rob Hildebrand? No. Rob does is a looker, though. Um, and then I started thinking, like, I need to remove, like, if I want to actually be this person's friend, because I felt guilty, because I felt guilty, no, because <laughs> I felt guilty because I was like only having a relationship with this person because I thought it would serve me. So I was like, man, if I want to actually be a friend, mm-hmm. then th- this is shameful. I can't have this. I need to actually have unconditional love for them. Was it Rye? No. I need to re- strip away this stupid like, like idea that appearance makes people valuable and find like. Was it Nathan Hager? No. I need to see (laughs) 
why they are worth loving. <laughs> okay, I am actually I am actually listening to you, and yes, uh, that is extremely valid because you see someone who you think holds a much higher place than you in an X area, and you want to be friends with them because you can be like, "Ha look at my friends! Look how cool I am!" <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool it's guy. not even like I'm trying to earn like an appearance from other people. It's mm-hmm. just like I literally think that they're more valuable yeah. as a human being. Like I literally think that God should love them more if I follow the logic to the full, you know, extent, which obviously is a ridiculous statement. It's not something that I like want to feel. Was it Caden? No. Was it Jordan? No. Um well, Was it Ryan? Hold on, I was trying to make another statement. <laughs> no. Or was it Ryan? Because no. there's two Ryans in that class. It was neither of the Ryans. Um uh hold on, I'm trying to make a good point. <laughs> Shoot. The only the guy I can think um, of is me. Was it me? No. Wow, hurt. You don't I'm know not going to tell you who it is. I'm going to say no, even if you guess it right. Oh, shoot. What was I going to say? Oh, I had to get back to a place where I was thinking, what makes people actually valuable? And it's the fact that God loves them. So I just put myself in the position of someone who has no worldly worth. I was like, I'm freaking butt ugly. I'm a paraplegic. I have no skills and abilities, but I'm still sitting in this room. Am I worth loving? Yes. And then I thought, yeah, of course I'm worth loving. And then when I was thinking about that, that started be- like making me actually feel genuine feelings of love for this person. You just summed up my whole ethics class that I have a whole semester on. <laughs> it made me start feeling genuine feelings of love for this person. I was like, I need to pursue this in every... All of my relationships. <coughs> I need to try and strip away whatever reasons I think this person is valuable. I'm not kidding. You actually summed up my whole ethics class. One more point. But I don't think that I shouldn't value things that make that are like skills and abilities that people have or like Was it talents. Tom Hoff? Or even like someone's physical appearance. I can still recognize that and be like, that's cool and like be happy about it was Tom that. Hoff. Or, or or like value no or value that they have like that's no a, to one of them. that's a cool talent. But I can't make that their worth, you know? That's fair. Yeah. That was really hard to get through. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a heads up, I said Tom Hoff twice, and you said no once, so no. therefore it was no, Tom Hoff. No, it's not Tom Hoff. Oh, well, now that's four, and you've only said it twice. No, so. no, no. Okay, there you go. Now you had one extra. No, so that means you're uh, over-denying. Oh, uh, shoot. So therefore... Yeah, you're right. It's it's Tom Hoff. I mean, those, I bro- those muscles. <laughs> Dude! He, okay. He's, he's jacked. What, he's what I call deceptively, he's called what I call deceptively jacked. Deceptive jacked. Deceptively jacked. That's what yeah. I mean. Deceptively jacked. Um, he's got like a little layer of fat over all of his muscle. Yeah, he does. Swole dude. No, but you're right. Um, no, like in our ethics class, we're bringing up like specific scenarios where it comes down to like, like God still loves them. How does the world react to this? How should we react to this as Christians? How should we do this? How do we actually react? Um, and more often than not, it's like, yeah, we suck, but God still loves them. So we need to love them. And you just summed that whole, you just summed up that whole ethics class Mm -hmm. in that little talk. I mean, what really helped me is visualizing me being a worthless person. (laughs) Hey man, that's why I go to counseling because I think I am. Well, if you view yourself, if you, everything that you put pride in or judge yourself by, if you just like strip all those away, then you can't like have those these superficial standards that you judge people by because then you judge yourself worthless it kind of forces you to be like well everyone has to be worth loving because you don't want to accept that you're not worth loving Mm -hmm. you know no one's like okay with that some people feel that way but i don't think anyone's like yeah unless they're really far gone (laughs) unless they're real depraved yeah one point calvinist i believe in total depravity i believe that i do you think total depravity is a thing? Um, I don't think that people are incapable of good deeds, but I do think that all have fallen short of the glory of God. I can agree with that. So that no one is... I, good, okay. No one's good enough, but not. I don't believe... Oh, gosh. Wow. I don't believe that no, that people have zero good. You know? I think yeah. our good score is subpar, but it still exists. It's like double bogey. It's like double bogey. Like, we still make good shots. But in the big picture, we kind of suck. At golf. I like that analogy. That's great. Our you think of sin, <laughs> if you think of total depravity as a golf game, you made a few good shots, but you still suck at golf. <laughs> <laughs> but you still scored that double. You may have hit that long drive, but let me tell you, your putting game sucks terribly. Terrible. Like, you have it in you. We saw you make a good shot. 
You hit that but drive. But they're not all going to be good shots. You hit that 250-yard drive. Was it into a sand trap? Maybe. Was it into a lake that one game? Possibly. Yeah, that's what I think mm-hmm. of him. This whole uh, journey that I've been going on with thinking mm-hmm. has made me realize just how sinful we are. Yeah, we're kind of terrible. Even the people I value that I was thinking, yeah, I love them. Turns out it was just selfish. Yep. Wow. I bet there's some people out there that don't have genuine love for a single human being. I would, I would agree it's with that. All, can you imagine realizing that? Oh my gosh, the, sh- the guilt I would feel. Oh gosh. Yep, that is a <laughs> I would feel terrible if that was my reality. I'm just gonna keep talking to the back. Oh, a group that kid of, was crying. A group of children just walked by and they got dangerously close before we realized we had to pull up our pants. Dog, my <laughs> pants were already up by the time you went. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Was it funny? That oh, was funny. We could have been. I like a little we... bit of danger. I never thought that I did. I thought that I was a safe have you seen guy. The, have you seen the TikTok where the guy he was like, "I'm gonna be doing a magic trick." But to add some, like, but, like, no magic trick. Or, no, he's going to be trying to do an escape trick. Yeah. But to prove that I truly am escaping (laughs) and I am living dangerously, I will be strapped to this device, which will pull down my pants and underwear. (laughs) I will be performing this trick in front of first and second graders with a cop. So that way, if I don't complete it, I will be labeled as a sex offender for the rest of my life. Wow, that's a level of danger that I could not accept. I could never. I don't think it's actually true, but it was so funny. <laughs> Bro, the, did you ever watch that show, Little Dicky? Lil, Lil Dicky? Sorry. I once got made fun of for saying Little Dicky. Who made fun of you? I think I know who. No, it wasn't here. It was oh. It was years ago. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Because that show's only been out for like two years. I've talked about rappers before the show. <laughs> Bef- oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, was Lil Dicky, like, famous before the show? Uh, I don't know. Because I have no idea. But anyways, I was yeah. talking about that rapper. Um, no, I wasn't going to make a statement about talking about him. In the show, he's at a concert, and he was, like, super nervous before the concert. And there's, like, this huge scene where he just, like, kills his insecure past self. And he's like, you know what, I'm just going to go up there and just be me. And he just like starts going wild on pe- on stage, and people mm-hmm. are loving it. But then he he flashes the crowd because Uh-oh. he just loses track of it too much. And then it's not until the next episode that you see that now he's a registered sex offender because there was <laughs> kids in the in, in the audience. So they took this huge moment of personal growth and they just pooped on it. I love irony. <sighs> irony is amazing. Yes. 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 Irony. That's all I got. Just irony. Irony. Irony is the salt of life. I just like humor. It is shocking how important humor is to me. It's like, shocking to me how much um, of entertainment is made up by humor. I'd say like a solid 85%. 85% is a good, probably a good amount. The other... Um, 15. 20. F- wait. 15. Is it, why did I think this would be 25? That's stupid. The other, 75. Well, I would say that about 75% of entertainment is comedy. And, I can get behind and that. And the other 24% is porn. And then the 1% is <laughs> other stuff. You know what? I would. Yeah, I'd be willing to say it's 49 humor, 50 porn, because, like, a, like isn't like a third of the porn, like a third of the internet porn? I think. I'm going to look up that stat. I legitimately think a third of the internet is porn. That is disgusting, first off. You know how there's vegans? You know how there's vegans? I don't like where this is going. You know how there's vegans? Yeah. They're like, man, the meat industry is so bad. Why don't we have the same kind of people but with porn? Where they're like, nah, dude, I'm a, uh, I was going to say sexist. (laughs) 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 What's the, what would be the equivalent but with porn? Like anti or pro? Against it. Like, vegans uh, are like, no meat because that industry is bad. Why aren't there people that are just, it's just like normal in life where they're like, yeah, I don't watch porn because I think that industry is bad. You, you, you're kidding, right? There's lots of people there's like, like that. There's like Christians that do it, but why But why are, are these people that care no, about I know, social justice? No, I know a lot of people who are not saved care really? deeply about this. Really? Oh, yeah. I've like heard zero from non-Christians. Really? I've yeah. heard a lot. Interesting. Oh, 
Interesting. That makes me wonder what uh, other people's perception is. So I feel like anti-porn is m- mainly seen as a religious thing. Not a social Pri- oh, justice pri- thing. Primarily it is. Primarily it is. Um, most of these people are talking about sex trade, sex slaves, um, child trafficking, um, at, like that sort of thing. Oh my gosh, 30% of the internet is porn. A third. What? Yep. A third of the internet? And then, here's the thing. The internet is by all definitions limitless because you can constantly add new stuff to it. Bro. Yep. A third of the internet is just porn. Mm Mm-hmm. It's gross. How? It's terrible. So many people must must watch porn. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, one time I was in a, I think it was a psychology class in high school or something and we were talking about uh, the effects of watching porn and someone said, well, the teacher said that there's actually very little data on people that don't watch porn because in all the studies, they struggled to find enough people that don't watch porn to be yep. the control group. Yep. So they like there's so many studies that just couldn't happen because they couldn't have a control group. Mm-hmm. Which I think is kind of dumb because then they can just be like, hey man, this is what it does because of all these people. But they can't compare it. They can't be like, these people are more depressed than someone who doesn't watch porn. Mm, interesting. Because maybe people are just that depressed anyways, and they wrongfully attribute it to porn. You know what? That's fair. You gotta be scientific about these. Control group, control group dumb. Control group dumb. That's not true. Control groups are actually very scientific and very helpful. They're super valuable. I want there to be as many anti-porn people as there are vegans. And I want it to have the same vibe. Just the you know hipsters. No, just like ew, no. That industry like takes people and like ruins people. It's so gross. Why would you do that? It's so much worse than the meat industry. Why it doesn't it not have so much more attention? Because people enjoy it. You're true. That's right. It's a third of what people do on the internet. Yep. That is ridiculous. Yep. <clears throat> oh, also the reason I knew that um, is because my dad is actually a porn addiction counselor. Yeah, I don't just, like, know that. Read up on porn. I mean, like, I guess I could. I like, have In a before. healthy way. I've read up stats before. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I like watching interviews of people that were ex-porn stars. <sighs> I was really curious as to where you were going to go with that. <laughs> I said I like watching. No, I like watching uh, interviews of people that are ex-porn stars because uh, I would assume... There's a lot of, like, cool stuff that they say. Because I would assume that they would be like, yeah, it was the worst thing ever. I am deeply broken. But some of them are like, yeah, it was a fun job. And yeah. I'm like, wow, what? Really? Yeah, exactly. Some of them make crap loads of money doing it. There's two dogs that peeing at the exact same time. Nice. I like those dogs. Just a pee break. <laughs> There's a lot of people walking by right now. Okay, this is going to be a left turn conversation. Okay. Um, do you think that your perception of your... Uh, the, mm, do you think you have an accurate perception of what other people think you look like? No. I don't. The dog's beautiful. Oh, oh my gosh. Pretty doggy. Do you think you have an accurate perception? No, I don't. And why? Okay, that dog looks like if a wolf and a bear yeah. had a child. Yeah, it did have a very chunky face. Yeah. <laughs> and then the ears were, like, sharp like a wolf, and it had, like, the snout of a wolf. But it was a big dude. Cute boy. Heckin' good doggo. Assuming it was a boy. It looked like it would be a male. If a cartoon artist drew that dog, it would be a male. Agreed. Um, no, I don't think I do. Um, because... I have been told by the general consensus that I am a decent looking man. I'm an above average looking guy. And I look in the mirror and I go, mm-hmm. I don't see it. And then I just walk away. Yeah. So I, like, I'm not going to deny, like, apparently I am attractive. There are, apparently, there are women who are attracted to me and they have said that I'm good looking. That's out. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that reminds me of? It's a conversation that we had. It was like, you know why men cheat? Because they have a penis and they want to use it. Up top, baby. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes, it wasn't about cheating, though. It I was, thought it was. No, it was about something else. 
Wait, what was it about? Was I don't remember. About? I don't remember. It was definitely about something to do with men and sex. I think it might have been just like, premarital why, sex. Why do men want to have a higher libido? And then I think I maybe I think I might answer because I have a penis and I want to use it. Up top. <laughs> it was the up top that <laughs> really got me. <laughs> can you put, can you turn across so I can roll up the windows so there? Yeah. You know, not like water. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just gonna roll it all the way up. Oh. <laughs> up top. <laughs> that's what that's what sent me. That still pops into my head every once in a while, and I'm just like, <laughs> nice. Oh, that's, funny. that's that's one of my favorite memes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, adding up top to the end of most um, hot takes makes them twice as funny. I agree. I use that joke today. That's like a regular joke that I use up top. Good. You know, some people, some ladies were uh, talking about because uh, they're like Bible majors, and they were talking about you know a lot of people don't even think that they should be in. Yeah, the just being that stuff. Yeah, and I was yeah. just like off to the side next to someone who also was clearly overhearing the conversation. I just looked and I was like, women, always complaining, am I right? Up top. <laughs> <laughs> really proud of it. <laughs> I also don't think I have an accurate perception of what I look like. I don't know what I look like. I thought I did, um, but I lost five pounds recently just because Let's go. I wanted to learn how to how to control my weight so in the future you know when our, my metabolism slows down i want to already have those habits built where i know mm. how to you know diet and count calories and stuff yeah um and i thought that what i look like now is what i used to look like like with my shirt off mm. but then looking at the pictures i'm like i was delusional <laughs> so i have seen studies where when you look in a mirror you either see yourself as much more attractive or as much worse looking it depends on your mood. Mm. So if like if you're depressed, if you're anxious, if you're down in the dumps, when you look in the mirror and you see yourself, you're like, man, I'm really ugly. Uh, but if you are like much more joyful, much more happy, a little bit more like just like in a better place in life, you're gonna look in the mirror and be like, dang, I look good. You know, I also learned that generally men rate themselves higher than women rate yes, themselves. Yes, yes, they do. So generally, men would be like, I'm a seven or an eight. Women would be like, I'm a five six or seven man women have a much broader scale apparently i learned that in a show where they were uh, it was battle of the sexes thing and they just mm -hmm. did like a quick study that all the men and women rate themselves and all the men rated themselves higher than the women like the average for men was probably like eight was on average i think it was seven or eight yeah and they said that's a point for the women because they're more humble but i was like no that's a point for the men because they have higher self-esteem it could go both ways. It could. It's just a matter of perspective. But anyways, yeah. I, I, so now I'm like, if that's what I thought I looked like before, then do I really even know what I look like now? Mm-hmm. No, probably not. Yeah. Probably not. I think it's because, like, I've had a bunch of lows recently. I'm like, dang, I am kind of bad looking. That might, I need to work out. No, that might be it. It just might be, like, general. Mm -hmm. General well-being leads to how you view yourself. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. Yeah. And because of how you view yourself, you project that onto other people. Full oh, circle, up top. Oh, so you think everyone's ugly? That's not even close <laughs> to what I said. Actually, uh, that kind of is what I said. I mean, Crap. No, you, you would base people's value. Uh, everyone's worse theory. looking than me, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I cry with the smell of bacon. I cry at the smell of bacon. <laughs> I didn't work that into a conversation. I'm so disappointed. I want to. I'm going to do that at dinner tonight. I will. I'm hungry. I will do it. I will that's, do it. <laughs> that's what I hate about working out is I've been eating so much more. And oh, I'm like. Oh, yeah. You can't do that. Like, you do you are burn, You are do be doing the more calories yeah. burning. <laughs> <laughs> you do be doing the more calories burning. Sometimes, sometimes I talk like that on purpose. That was not on purpose. <laughs> you do be doing the more calorie burning. <laughs> It's easy to overcompensate. It's 
it's easy to overcompensate Ooh. and go the other direction. Oh my gosh. Put on weight while you're working out. Uh, okay, but the thing is, okay, so I've been eating more, yeah. but I've been eating healthier, like a lot That's healthier. Good. That's good. Like, yeah. I eat a full bowl of spinach at every meal. That's great. Um, I eat breakfast sandwiches from Rogers. It's just like bread, sausage, cheese, and egg. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not, like, the, the bread's the worst thing on there. Maybe the cheese, maybe. Um, and then I try to get, like, chicken and salad, like, with everything. Like I said, the yeah. bowl of spinach. Um, I've been getting a lot more protein recently. I need to drink protein shakes. Will, I need my protein back! It scared me. Sorry. Uh, he has my protein because I was like, eh, I don't want it. Here you go. You work out a lot more than I do. But joke's on him. I want it back. So I set a 2,500 calorie limit for myself. And at first it was kind of difficult to meet that. Mm-hmm. Now it's actually difficult to meet. Like, like I, getting to that. Yeah. Like I'll be full and be like, well, I guess I could eat a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Treat yourself. So I actually only eat 2,300 now just because, and even <sighs> that is like, I could, I could do with less. Because I'm, I'm making myself eat five servings of fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And just the volume of food that is was so much more than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. So I'm eating, like, these, like, giant plates of greens for lunch. And I'm like, that's plenty. And it's only, like, 500 calories. I had chocolate chip pancakes for lunch. I only had two, but that's, like, a lot of calories right there. I have a protein pancake every day in the morning Bro, to help me get out to help me get out of, to help me get out of bed yeah because pancakes are great and you need a little jump and then i eat a big salad for lunch and then i eat whatever my mom makes and i have like two um snacks where i mainly eat, just eat fruit mm-hmm. and just the sheer volume of food that i'm eating was more than it was before but mm-hmm. it's so much less calories i think i think that's what it is for me i think because like i've been drinking a lot more water i've been eating a lot more protein a lot more salad i think i'm eating volume wise more yeah but in a health manner a lot less or a lot better yeah, yeah less calories yeah because like i'm not going to like the fried foods every time i'm not getting yeah. like i still get like the chicken sandwich every once in a while but instead of putting fry sauce on there i just eat it as is yeah that's really good yeah our appetites lie to us so much like True. you used to have the advice <clears throat> just eat when you're hungry um absolutely not that's yeah it's like that's true to a degree but our appetites aren't based on calorie intake. It's more based on volume than and protein. It's honestly so, mostly protein. So, yeah. So you can overeat calories easily and still be hungry. Dude, you know how easy it is to overeat calories? Oh, my gosh. You just have, like, four Costco muffins in a day, and you're like, man, I'm still hungry. I know, dude. You can eat, like, a <laughs> tiny little just, like, brick of something. Like, imagine eating a whole stick of butter. <laughs> Are you going to feel full? Absolutely not. Probably not, but that's... That's like a thousand calories. That's a buttload of calories. I legitimately think it's more protein intake than anything else. Protein's huge, yeah. I do have a cut. I try to get 100 grams of protein a day. Fun fact, you should eat 10% of your target weight in protein in grams a day. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. You can obviously shoot for more, but like your targeted weight, that is what you want to shoot for. Just for like maintaining or for gaining muscle? I believe it's for maintaining. Interesting. Maintaining doesn't make sense if it's ten percent. Mm-hmm. That that would make sense um, for maintaining. For putting on muscle, I feel like you would need more. Yeah, um, one I'm of the. Not, I'm not a scientist. I've talked to, I've talked about this guy I think before on here, but uh, there's a TikToker I follow. His name's Nathan Fry. Um, he legitimately goes through a jar of peanut butter and a box of cheese. It's a week That's... because his metabolism is so fast that he cannot like put on weight unless he eats that, and. Yeah. His pantry legitimately consists of eggs, spinach, and kale, and peanut butter and Cheez-Its. He literally <laughs> takes Cheez-Its, dips them in peanut butter, and Ooh, eats them. Ooh, that's... Oh, that sounds so good. I know. Salty. Dang it. Salty. Yeah, I barely eat any peanut butter now because it is ridiculously... It's fatty. ...caloric. It's fatty. Two tablespoons of 100. Oh. You know how many tablespoons I put on a peanut butter jelly sandwich? Like, at least five. Yeah. Like, at least five. Turns out... Dude. The amount of calories and sugar in cake is less than the PB&Js I was making. No way. Yeah. I don't believe that. No, that's true. I true. I don't believe that, but okay. It's true. Jelly is super sugary. Nutritional value, though, peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, way better. But just in terms of calories and sugar, I might as well just eat cake. <laughs> like... I was at let them eat cake. I was at someone's house, and uh, the the uh, the wife was getting on the dude for with his eating habits because he mm. was on his like second or third piece of pumpkin pie, and she was like, "Gotta stop eating that." 
He's like, you need to eat more peanut butter jelly sandwiches because <laughs> it's healthy. And I just wanted to be like, the pie is actually better. <laughs> <laughs> and just free that man. But I didn't want to get interjected. Yeah, you don't want you don't <laughs> you don't want to be like actually you don't want to be that guy. I just wanted to free him to eat the foods that he actually likes. Because if he were to eat the food that they think is healthy, they're just gonna get fatter. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many people are stuck in that. They're like, I want to lose okay, weight. But like, so okay, but like, okay, peanut wait, wait, wait. butter. They're eating avocados. What about, oh, avocados. Whoa, hold up. Pretty fatty. Really? They're not that bad. Like a cup, I think is like two hundred thirty calories. That's not bad. Which is a lot for wait a, a cup of, a cup of avocado. That's, so that's a like lot. A, that's like a large avocado. That's a that's a lot of. So hold you, up. That's a, so whole, whole, I can eat a lot of avocado. If you eat the whole like large avocado, you know the ones that are like. Yeah, yeah, like the, the big, big one. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like about 200 calories. I could have a lot more avocado. But compare that to an onion, 50 calories. A whole onion? A whole onion. You ever bit into an onion calories. like an apple? I have. I started baking in whole onions. They're delicious. What? Yeah. Try it. No! No, it's great. No, I've bit into a whole onion. Not a, Yeah, not a raw one. you got to bake the whole thing like a baked potato. <laughs> I don't like baked potatoes. No, 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 no. I don't like baked no, no, potatoes. No, 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 no. You know the onions that you put on like burgers that are all like caramelized? That well, that's good. That's the whole onion. But that takes a long time. It takes twenty minutes. <laughs> that's a long time. What do you okay, mean? Fine. I guess that's a long time if you just want your frozen pop tarts. I don't want frozen. Ew! What? No, Mama didn't. No, no, Mama didn't raise no weenie. <laughs> you don't like pop tarts? Not frozen pop tarts. Freaking love pop tarts. I do. Pop tarts are phenomenal, but not frozen. No. No. No, you don't want to crack open a nice cold. No. Pop-tart. I don't want to sit there and suck on a pop tart and like crush my teeth. You don't need to suck on it. They're brittle. Dude, okay. The peanut butter chocolate s- s'more pop tarts. Mm-hmm. I would kill for one of those right now. I'm gonna put my phone there. Just... What time is it? It is four forty-seven. Four forty-seven. Dog, you gotta get home. You gotta hang out with your sister That's and your true. wife. You need to go home. Okay. Um, nutrition cults for professors and... There's a lot of good stuff in this one. Um, <laughs> you, what was it? You do be, what? You, you do oh, be shit. doing... You do, do be doing, you do be calorie... Burning. You do be doing the calorie burning. <laughs> <laughs> you do be doing the calorie burning. Y- uh, yeah, yeet. Uh,